Stock markets tread with caution a day ahead of the union budget. Sensex and Nifty end a choppy session with small losses but off the day's lows. The budget session of the parliament kicks off and the finance minister tables the economic survey, projects GDP for this fiscal between 65 to 7%, says real GDP is now nearing pre-pandemic levels. SEBI chairperson Madhubi Puri Bush flags the growing risk of retail participation in the FNO segment. Economic survey equates derivative trading to gambling and calls for careful consideration on the rise in participation in this particular segment. Hello and welcome to this fresh new edition of Markets Forward, your go-to show where we aim to get you everything you need to know as you gear up for the next session. Uh, today, of course, was absolutely flat. And tomorrow, 11 o'clock, we have the Finance Minister laying out the union budget for F525. I'm Prashant Budmi, my colleague Rima. Rima, hi. Hi. So prepping up for the big day tomorrow, but not without a lot of market activity. The mid-caps did exceedingly well. But here's what we have for you in the next 20 minutes on the show. All the big news, the key developments in Dalal Street, the top corporate voices through the day, and the big events for tomorrow. But first, the market action. I mean, off the lows, Rima. Off so, the lows. Uh, and, and that uh, happened in the first 30 minutes. In the first uh, 30 minutes or so. And uh, I think the, you know, it was actually not a bad session at all because uh, the reason why we were down also was because of specific uh, stock-related reactions, earnings-related reactions like Reliance and Wipro and Kotak, uh, the three big uh, drags that we had. Uh, and otherwise, I mean, you know, you look at the broader market, the mid-cap, small caps after Friday's two, two and a half percent cuts, those indices recovered about nearly one percent each. Market breadth was positive overall. PSUs, which has been kind of the flag bearer for the retail participation and the enthusiasm, that pocket was doing just fine. Uh, so it was, you know, more earnings related cuts, which uh, sort of dragged the market lower. Uh, so, I mean, to, yeah, I mean, the budget tomorrow, I think there would be some nerves in the market and, you know, some in the market saying, well, all of this talk with the RBI governor, the SEBI chief, now the economic survey talking about, uh, you know, the uh, huge speculation and futures and options, especially on the option side, means that something could come on taxation front. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the SEBI chief has made it clear that something will come. There is a committee which has been formed and, you know, but that's not tax related. That could be operational issues, regulatory measures which would come post the budget. But will we see something in, in this regard from a capital markets point of view uh, as far as tax is concerned? I think that at the margin for some is a bit of a niggling worry. But I don't think there is widespread fear in that sense. Uh, it didn't show in prices in any case because broader markets, etc., uh, which is fine. Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely okay ahead of a big event for the markets to pause a little bit. Rima. Well, the widespread expectation is that she will be able to balance fiscal consolidation, prudence and welfare spending. But if you look at the market action today, as we pointed out, the index ended absolutely flat. And that's because the two heavyweights pretty much cancelled each other out. If you pull up a contribution plate, uh, Reliance Industries was under pressure, post its numbers. It took away about 82 points on the Nifty. And HDFC Bank, with the up move today, added about 60-odd points, so largely cancelling each other out. So that was the big story on the frontline indices. PSUs continue to come in for buying. So the Nifty PSC index ended with a gain of more than a percent, up 1.8%, inching towards a 2% rally. Uh, CPSC is higher in trade. Uh, Mid-caps did very well. The mid-cap index outperformed strong advanced decline ratio. And we are going into the big event with a year-to-date gain of 12.5%, 13% on the Nifty and the Sensex, and about 22.5% for the mid-cap index. But here's what we have for you on our show. We tell you the top movers and shakers of the day Hormis is standing by. Wipro was the stock of the day after a weak set of Q1 numbers. Kotak Mahindra Bank, Indian Hotels, also in focus after reporting Q1 numbers. We'll decode all the earnings reaction and we'll talk about the day tomorrow and what you should be watching out for. But first, to the top, uh, the first segment of the day with Hormis, uh, with the top stock movers of the day. Well, we highlighted earlier this morning that a lot would hinge on the two index heavyweights as to where the nifty moves today, be it Reliance Industries or HDFC Bank. Well, both moved in opposite directions today and the result was that the nifty went nowhere at the close of trading. And there you can see Reliance and HDFC Bank, both of them ending on the opposite side of the spectrum. But as you mentioned, Wipro, the stock of the day, 9% lower. The biggest single day drop since April of 2013 is the one that Wipro has seen today. And Dollar Dairy earnings came out today 
today, 7% higher there as well. And Canfin Homes was down around 3% by uh, in towards the close of trade, but then saw a sharp recovery and ended just half a percent lower. PSUs were the one that did well today and led by the shipbuilders. They've had a quiet last three to four trading sessions, but then they have had a bit of a rebound today. Cochin Shipyard, Garden Reach, both gaining around 5% each. And HAL also snapped a three-day losing streak today. And NBCC also ending the day with gains of close to 8%. Fertilizer stocks had a good day ahead of the budget presentation tomorrow, so hopes for some positive announcement there as well. Chumbal, Fact, RCF, NFL, all of them gaining anywhere between 4 to 10% in today's trading session. Some of the other broader market losers than Tejas Networks was another earnings reaction, if you can call it that, Sick, almost 7% lower there as well. Phoenix Mills was one of the other real estate names that didn't do well, as did Raymond, a 5% lower circuit there. Blue Dart and Intellect Design also not having a good day at the office. And lastly, Indus Towers and towards the close of trade, you came out with City coming out with a positive catalyst watch on the stock with a 500 rupee price target. The only brokerage now to have a 500 rupee target on Indus Towers ending 3% higher at the highest point of the day. Back to you guys. Okay, City's argument is that even after the stock moving up so much and it's up 110% from the beginning of the year, over the last five years, the stock has still underperformed the broader markets by nearly 30%. And plus, there are positive triggers on the horizon. But thank you, uh, Hormuz, for that. Let's uh, invite uh, you know, Anand Tandon once again. He's been with us uh, on Closing Bell too. And Shilpa Rao, the Prabhudas Leeladhar on the show. Uh, thank you for joining in. Shilpa, first, uh, uh, how did the market look to you? What's the setup for tomorrow? Arima, talking about market, we saw some nervousness, you know, just before the budget. Also, I mean, the last week closing Friday also, we saw that nervousness, you know, looming over. But however, the levels are quite strongly held on to. The, the correction that we have seen, I mean, just a profit booking, it has not breached the crucial levels of 24,200 yet. So till that levels are held on, I believe there's nothing to worry about. The upside trend is intact probably tomorrow after the budget, some clarity will come in and we might see some aggressive movement on either side, either we've reached 24,200 and moved towards 23,700 to 23,500 or we go and make new all-time highs. Mm, Anand, uh, uh, you know, the, of course, uh, the how, uh, near term, perhaps uh, the budget will have a say, but uh, what is your view, short term, near term, markets? The markets are still in their upturn, so you just have to play with the momentum. Clearly, the, you cannot argue for it from a fundamental or an earnings basis. But uh, overall, the market continues to show signs of robustness. There is some in, uh, incremental nervousness in the U.S. market, but after Biden stepping down, I don't think that that will sustain either. Today's market play will be interesting to watch from that point of view, because that was beginning to show some signs of uh, you know a trend break there. But if that doesn't happen, then you know that is also a market that uh, may probably resume its upward journey. The key thing you have to remember is that you know when we argue, for example, that the U.S. is overpriced, therefore money will move out. You have to take a simple case. Take HDFC asset management company. One number that will uh, that will help you to put it in perspective. It trades at roughly 12 to 4, 13 times AUM as percentage of AUM. BlackRock, which is 10.5 trillion. And therefore, you know, and by the way, uh, HDFC, AMC is 90 billion. This is 10.5 trillion trades at 122 billion, which is like 1.1 or 1.2 times uh, a percentage of A. That's the kind of difference. You're talking about 100 times bigger size, 10 times more valuation. So India is actually very, very expensive in most, in most areas. Okay, let's talk about uh, individual stocks. And one stock where the momentum was broken today was Wipro. Down 10% today, it was down 2.5% even on Friday. This is after reporting disappointing set of numbers. But remember, the stock has seen a fantastic run-up over the last month and a half when the stock price rallied from levels of 440 all the way to 575. Q1 was weak, lower than street expectations in the top line. Sixth consecutive quarter of a revenue miss. Q2 guidance is also not very exciting. In fact, lower than expectation. And it leaves the door open for another negative growth quarter. Minus one to plus one percent. In terms of uh, brokerage opinion, Wipro believes, sorry, Kotak on Wipro, they're saying the valuations are expensive at 21 times forward multiples, so there is very little margin of safety. UBS says we're seeing a delayed conversion of order wins to revenue. And that will keep the growth rate pressure and pressured, and therefore Wipro will continue to underperform its peers. 
Uh, but uh, on the other hand, you've got a uh, you know Nomura and CLSA, both of them still very bullish on Wipro. And Nomura has put a target price of 600, CLSA stands at 588. Anand, anything on Wipro, even persistent, uh, rebounded after Friday's loss. Uh, you want to come in on the earnings reaction? You know, Wipro has all, has surprisingly been uh, not performing. I mean, they have tried whatever they could. They've come, regularly changed their leadership. Uh, and every time there is leadership change, there is some hope that, you know, somehow that will uh, put some, uh, uh, you know, momentum in terms of their earnings. But it has flattered to deceive. So, you know, the last time around we had the same issue. The sustenance of the share price movement upwards was for a longer period. This time it looks like, you know, it has taken hardly a quarter before it has decided that, you know, not much is changing and the numbers are not showing anything. Persistent, on the other hand, did exactly the same a few years ago, changed the management, bought in professional management and the promoter stepped back from trying to, uh, you know, manage the sales cycle and the results have been dramatically good. But again, uh, look at the valuation for all these companies. At this stage, I think, you know, the frontline companies are looking a little better and perhaps even cheaper uh, with perhaps better growth trajectory, given the constraint that overall the sector itself is not growing very well. But at least the frontline companies have come back to the game, whereas the larger, the smaller uh, mid-cap companies have uh, perhaps uh, run up too fast, too, too far to it, too fast. Um, no, got that. Uh, by the way, uh, Shilpa, any thoughts on these talks? Uh, IT names? IT, yes. Uh, no, talking about Wipro. Wipro is breaking support second and below 500. You know, you will see the stock again uh, sliding in and going below 480 to 470 zones. So that is one stock. You know, I would keep on radar. It could be. I mean, it is a sell for me with a stop loss of 520 from here for targets of 470. So that is one from the IT bank. Okay, let's get to the banking picture then. HDFC Bank up 2%, while Kotak Mahindra Bank slumped post the Q1 numbers. Abhishek joins in with the details. Abhishek. Well, tale of two cities, right? Uh, if you take a look, one has improved their net interest margin, rewarded by the street, and one has seen decline in its net interest margin, and that has been bashed by the street. So take a look at SDFC Bank. They have beaten our poll. The NI beat is of 0.9%, uh, while, uh, you know, uh, PAT beat is more than 3%. Net interest margin improved by three basis points on a sequential basis. Now, analysts were pegging a flat net interest margin on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Other income was down 41.3% quarter-on-quarter, last quarter, they has a treasury gain of close to 7,600 crores. Operating profits declined by 18.4% quarter on quarter and if you remove the treasury income, the operating profit is a growth of 9% on a sequential basis. Uh, provisions declined by almost 81% quarter on quarter. Asset quality did deteriorate in this quarter. That is largely to do with the fact that it's seasonal in nature that their agri portfolio sees rise in NPS in Q1 versus Q4 numbers. So gross NPA and absolute value increased uh, by 5.9%, while net NPA in absolute value increased by 17.5%. A gross NPA ratio and net NPA ratio remained at 1.3% and 0.4% respectively. A calculation shows that the PCR has fallen uh, to 71.2% versus 74% in the previous quarter. Now take a look at Kotak Mahindra Bank. Net interest margin is at uh, you know eight quarter low, despite the fact that their credit deposit ratio has improved. So net interest margin has come in at 5.02%, which is a decline of 26 basis point on a sequential basis and about 55 basis point decline on a YOY basis. Uh, deposits have grown by 15.8% YOY and they have declined by 0.3% sequentially. YOY, the deposit growth is the lowest in last six quarters and, uh, you know, sequentially, first time their deposits have shrunk in last 16 quarters. Healthy, uh, you know, advances growth. However, operating profit was very weak, growing at 6% uh, YOY, which is the weakest in last eight quarters. Provisions shot up and they had an exceptional gain of about 3,500 odd crores. So the NI was below our poll. However, PAT was ahead of our poll. In terms of asset quality, gross NPA and net NPA increased by 3.8% and 8.3% respectively. Back to you. Thank you very much for that. The other stock on our radar is Indian Hotels. The stock surging 8%. Good Q1, positive management commentary. Mangalam joins in for more. Mangalam.
Well, it was a seasonally weak quarter for the hotel industry, and in that, Indian hotels actually reported a, what was a resilient set. So, despite you know there being a, the mode, a, a election code of conduct, and as a result of which lower revenue coming in on account of that, the severe heat wave which you know disrupted travel plans, and also lower wedding dates which resulted in 25% lower wedding revenue for the company, they managed to go ahead and report 5.7% growth in the revenue. They controlled costs well, so margins improved by about 100 basis points as well, and the net profit reported. A double-digit growth, so making it, you know, yet another record first quarter for the company on the whole. And as a result of which, the pent-up demand that was there, the management told CNBC TV18 that you know uh, July has done well for them. In the first 17, 18 days of July, they've actually seen 20% growth, and as a result of which, they've also maintained their growth target of double digit for this entire year. Occupancy improved by 100 basis points, average room rate improved by 2% uh, as well. And importantly, they are, you know, uh, pretty optimistic about opening 25 hotels this year, along with a couple of properties in, uh, you know, uh, overseas as well, which includes a trophy property in Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, Mangalan, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, Anand, uh, I think the travel and leisure space is something you've liked. Uh, any thoughts on Ind Indian hotels? Well, yes, that's a space that has actually done remarkably well after COVID and uh, continues to do reasonably well. Uh, the hotel business, unfortunately, is very capital-intensive business and therefore the ROEs always suffer. But among that, uh, obviously, Indian hotels is the biggest brand and therefore, given the fact that they have now gone back to expansion and perhaps uh, looking at a little more carefully at their asset turnover numbers, uh, you know, this is a company which has done uh, extremely well and will likely continue doing so. If you look at purely the valuation, I think some of the smaller hotel companies are looking a little cheaper, and especially those at the business end. So from a fresh investment perspective, that could be something one could look at, but uh, Indian hotels itself will probably do better from next quarter onwards, given the kind of guidance they put out. Mm. Uh, by the way, uh, Shilpa, the banking names, I don't think we got a chance to uh, talk about. Kotak and HDFC went uh, in opposite directions today. What are your thoughts here? Kotak has been underperforming quite for some time, you know, Prashant, uh, in comparison to the peers. The Kotak Bank now below 1740 uh, is very weak and it can do, you know, maybe 1680 as well. On the other hand, HDFC Bank is holding on to this 1580 to 1600 zones. So as long as we are doing that, you know, HDFC Bank has much more potential to see the levels up again 1750 to 1780 zones. So the bet would be more on the longs for HDFC Bank. Anand Shilpa, thank you very much uh, for joining in. We need to get into a short break. We'll come back with the top corporate voices on the other side and the big events for tomorrow. Okay, welcome back. Uh, I mean, if you missed a lot of the commentary that you that we had through the course of the day here on CNBC TV 18 in terms of corporates we spoke to, uh, don't fret, uh, here it goes. We had a, a few top managements join us today and I'll start with JSW Steel. Uh, and uh, this is the first uh, company we're going to put out in Corporate Corner. Uh, we spoke with them, the management told us that, uh, you know, <clears throat> after first quarter earnings, uh, margins will be supported as costs are cooling and realizations are stable. Uh, JWC also said that uh, they're interested in Vedanta's mining assets, but not steel assets. The company is also pushing uh, for government action to adjust steel imports uh, into India before they become a bit of a worry. We also have the management of credit access, Grameen. Here there was uh, a little bit of worry on the slippages in the first quarter numbers. The management is estimating higher risk in the coming future. Uh, the MD told us that uh, growth will be slightly lower this year uh, because of uh, elections and restrictions which impacted the MFI sector. On MFIs, they're expecting about a 20-odd percent growth in assets. Uh, dispersals, beg your pardon. The company has also reduced their guidance uh, as far as the MFI segment goes. And last but not but the least, uh, ICICI Lombard was also uh, someone who we spoke with. Mixed first quarter, management said that net earned premium will grow by between 16 and 17 percent, which is between 100 and 200 basis points higher than the industry <coughs> average. The company is expecting to see an overall improvement in underwriting performance on the pricing front, it is not looking to hike prices in the health portfolio and believes that a pr price hike is needed in third-party motor insurance. And before we wrap, we get you some of the key market events to watch out for. Vamakshi joins in. Vamakshi. 
Well, absolutely. The big event tomorrow is, of course, the union budget. All eyes will be on uh, FM Nirmala Sitaraman. She will be presenting the union budget in front of the parliament at 11 a.m. tomorrow. And stocks that are placed on rural consumption, infrastructure, as well as some others will be in focus tomorrow. But apart from that, lots of stocks in focus on the back of their numbers. From the Nifty Pack, we will be watching out for Bajaj Finance and HUL. Some others will include ICICI Prudential Life, Mahindra and Mahindra Financial Services, SRF, Torrent Pharma and United spirits. As far as some important board meetings are concerned, keep an eye out on Apollo Microsystems. They will be considering a preferential issue. Spice Chat, a board uh, uh, is expected to consider raising fresh capital and the company is exploring the possibility of raising funds via QIP. SRF will be considering issuance of NCDs up to 750 crores and Tata Consumer, a meeting of the Capital Raising Committee is expected to discuss various matters with respect to the rights issue. Keep in mind that the company had, uh, in fact the board had given its nod to rights issue up to almost 3,000 crores back in Jan 2024. Now, uh, lastly, we will be focusing on Baiju as well. Baiju's case is likely to be taken up by NCLAT tomorrow, so watch out for that one as well. Okay, all right, uh, Namakshi, thank you very much uh, for that. Well, uh, that's uh, looking ahead, but that also brings us uh, to a close as far as this edition of Markets Forward is concerned. From all of us here, the entire team, goodbye. Thank you very much for staying with us, but more news and updates on the other side of this break.